Hello everyone and welcome back to today's analysis. Now for the 44th episode I'm going to analyze none other than Loki, the secondary antagonist of the Infinity Saga in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Another iconic Marvel villain, Loki, or better yet the MCU version of him, is often praised as one of the most iconic cinematic villains to date, and the most iconic version of the character created, and in this episode I'm going to analyze all the information given about him throughout the films of the MCU, to better understand Loki, and examine his journey from a shy and insecure prince, to the iconic supervillain he has ultimately become. Now it offer a do, let's dive in. Loki Lofison was born in, no, on Jodenheim, the homeworld of the Frost Giants in the year 965 AD, only one year after Thor, and at his birth, for reasons unknown, he was abandoned by his father, King Laufey of the Frost Giants, only to be found by Odin, the king of Asgard, and taken and adopted by him, and raised as Loki Odinson, along with his uh, older brother, Thor. And throughout their childhood, Loki and Thor had somewhat of a sibling rivalry, but also quite a close bond with each other. However, that bond kind of faded as the years went by, as given the fact that Loki felt overshadowed by Thor, and in spite the fact that Odin loves both of them equally, he seemed that he loved Thor a bit more, this causing Loki to ultimately snap and his secrecy, and to try to overthrow Thor in order to prove that he is as capable as him to Odin. And by the year 2010, he, along with Thor and his friends, went on Jodenheim to confront the Frost Giants after the supposed invasion of Asgard, resulting in Odin saving all of them and banished Thor on Earth so he can learn more about empathy and humanity. And while Thor was in temporary exile, Loki found out the truth about his origins, and thus he, when he confronted Odin, he indirectly caused him to fall into a coma, and thus temporarily he supplanted him as the new king of Asgard, and even lied to his own brother that Odin died, and now Loki is the new king of Asgard. And in order to make sure that Thor doesn't come back, he summoned the destroyer to go and destroy Thor on Earth, and to kill as many people as possible. Only for it to fail, as Thor managed to find his way back on Asgard, confronted Loki, and ultimately caused Loki to be lost throughout time and space, Thor's exile came to an end, and he became the new crown prince of Asgard. However, while Loki managed to somehow arrive in the domain of Thanos, the Mad Titan, who ultimately pledged his own life to serve him, and thus, by the year 2012, Loki managed to arrive on Earth with the Kitao Receptor, which itself contains the Mind Stone, in order to board the Tata Tesseract, which it contains the Space Stone, as all as part of Thanos' quest for the Infinity Stones, as well as conquering the planet and killing half of his population in Thanos' name. Of course, thankfully, that didn't seem to happen, as his brother Thor came on Earth to stop him, as well as with other group of superheroes, Iron Man, Hulk, Captain America, Hawkeye, and Black Widow came all together to form the Avengers. They managed to defeat Loki, save Earth, and managed to bring him back to justice on Asgard, where he was sentenced to life imprisonment for treason against Asgard and for an attempted invasion of Earth. However, even this will be quite short-lived, as by 2013, the Dark Elves, the very masters that his adoptive grandfather Bor fought with over 5,000 years ago, came in order to claim the Eater, a powerful substance which contains the reality stone, in order to remake the universe in his in, in the image. Of course, and in the process, he lost his adoptive mother Frigga, one of the few family members that he actually cared about, resulting him and Thor teaming up alongside with Jane, and went in order to confront Malekith and put an end to his madness. But throughout the ordeal, Loki had tragically passed away, or so he seemed, as he faked his death in order to uh, supplant Odin and pre impersonate him to, uh, to the rest of Asgard, and thus Odin will be put into a self-imposed exile on Earth in the process. Thus, Loki succeeded in his ultimate goal, and even Thor didn't know anything, and for four years, Loki will rule Asgard while disguised as Odin, and will do anything he pleases. However, that came to an end in 2017, when Thor found out the truth, and ultimately Odin, the real one, passed away on Earth, resulting in their foster sister Hela, the goddess of death, to escape and to take over Asgard, while banishing both Thor and Loki on Sakharan. But now, before I go any further, we all should stop and ask ourselves, who is Loki evil? Now, I am fully aware of everything that he has done, as he is nothing more but a terrible person, who cares very little about others, but only about himself. However, this might be considered to be quite a hoax, in the sense that Loki, deep down, is nothing more but a very small and insecure person. As is proven through numerous times throughout the movies, the Loki always felt overshadowed and complex by his own brother, and always tried to prove that he is only as capable as him. 
Of course, only after he realized the truth about his origins, he finally snapped and decided to kill Thor. It is quite understandable, given the fact that he was abandoned by his biological father. And maybe, now it's there to say just maybe his biological mother might have died in birth. However, it could be in the end argued that none of these justified Loki's actions, nevertheless. But still, given the fact that he seems to be on and off throughout the entire franchise, given that he is either doing something good, but also does something evil, could be seen quite a justification. But in the end, we find out what Loki really wanted. Only one thing that he wanted was to be acknowledged by Odin, to be recognized as Thor's equal, and be accepted as a proud as guardian, as none of this ever came through in Loki's life. And it could be argued here that all that he wanted was only love from his father. But at the end of the day, he finally learned his lesson and redeemed himself in the process, as he teamed up with Thor and with Brunhilde the Hulk in order to take down Hela and end her madness once and for all. And in the end, the answer to the question is still pretty much yes. Loki is evil, however, he is the insecure kind of evil. And as I mentioned before, Hela met her on the mice at the hands of Sorter, and Asgard was destroyed, with Loki and the others now accompanying Thor as the new king of Asgard. However, this too was pretty much short-lived, as finally Loki's final moments came in 2018, when his former superior Thanos came and attacked the Asgardians, killed half of the population including Heimdall, and claimed the Space Stone from the Tesseract. However, while Loki tried to buy his way around him, and even to save Thor's life, he in the end met his own demise in the hands of the Mad Titan, finally ending this demigod's life once and for all. However, even in that, Loki will be technically avenged. First by by Thor in the same year, when he decapitated the original Thanos. And the second time five years later in 2023, when Thanos was finally killed once and for all by Iron Man, avenging Loki and all the people he had hurted from beyond the grave. So in the end, who was Loki? He was nothing more but a simple insecure person who tried to prove himself that he is as capable as his peer, a person that will walk the path of villainy and sometime redemption wherever the situation suits him, a person that could easily be called as one of the most iconic supervillains in cinematic history. Thank you all for tuning this new episode in today's analysis. I hope everybody enjoyed. Please don't forget to give a like and subscribe and have a nice day. Dead.